Let's talk about our democracy for a minute. <laughs> but let's do it in a way that makes the snowflakes' heads explode. Let me be clear before this podcast begins. We are loud, loud proud, proud, and do not give a fuck. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast. Real and raw political and social commentary. The freedom to oppress the rights of other people is not liberty, you shit-eating moron. Ah, the smell of freedom of speech. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast, and this is Tony Michaels. Hey, Tony, fuck them. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. That Dark Brandon does. That's what we're going to call it. Dark Brandon rope Oh, my God. He totally lulled them to sleep, didn't he? I mean, not Donald Trump. It's not past his... Is it past his jail time? <laughs> oh, so many good moments at laughing at MAGA over the weekend. They're fucking just a joke. Like a crazy fucking experiment in how much can we actually laugh at American politics? <laughs> what a bunch of assholes, right? Now, I've been thinking about this over the weekend, and we talked a little bit about it yesterday on the Sunday Rant and this morning on the Producer's Corner. Now, if you don't know what the Sunday Rant are in the Producer's Corner, those are part of the Patreon. Now, if you want to join Patreon, you can go over there and join. Any tier will get you to the Sunday Rant. Any paid membership will get you to the Sunday Rant. If you want to get the $20 tier, tier, that'll get you in the producer's corner on Discord every single Monday and Friday morning, an hour before the show. But here's the thing. If you really think about the timing of this, right? Joe Biden even outsmarted me. <laughs> now, I don't, I don't know if those motherfuckers are listening and they're taking notes and then they're like doing all kinds of math. Um, but here's the thing. When is, this is a good question. When is the State of the Union normally? Like, what month is it normally in? Huh? What month? January? End of January, beginning of February, right? Like that's normally when the State of the Union is. January, February. What day was the State of the Union on this year? What day? It was March 7th. Why in the fuck? Why in the fuck? Did Joe Biden, is it because he's old and he forgot that there was the State of the Union? Is it because he has dementia? Is that probably why they didn't wait? Maybe he couldn't get to the stage quick enough because he's so goddamn old, right? Right? March 7th? You waited till March, dude? Huh. It's kind of interesting that it happened two days after Super Tuesday. Two days. Now, why two days? Why two days after Super Tuesday, Tony? Why do you ask? Well, maybe we should ask Dark Brandon. Why in the fuck did you wait two days after Super Tuesday? Some people were saying that if Nikki Haley did not lose in South Carolina, there's no way she would make it past Super Tuesday. No way. And she would probably concede that night or the next day. That's exactly what happened, folks. Donald Trump sealed the Republican nomination on Super Tuesday. There's no pathway for Nikki Haley to make any kind of inroads to have enough delegates to win on the first ballot this summer at the Republican National Convention. Because that's what matters more than anything here. Is how you actually get the nomination, right? You actually get the nomination when you have enough delegates to win on a ballot at the convention. And the first ballot <laughs> is the easiest way to win if you win on that first ballot. Nikki Haley gathered up a handful of delegates, but she wasn't going to have near enough to even contest on the first ballot after Super Tuesday. That's why she dropped out. Not only did she lose all her big money donors after she got trounced in South Carolina, her home state where she was the governor, but she had to go on to at least win and make inroads, and she couldn't win a state. And she won Vermont, <laughs> which is laughable. She won D.C., but it's not enough. 
it's almost like it's almost like the Biden campaign knew knew that Super Tuesday was it. That was the fucking day that Donald Trump was going to seal the deal. And the very next day, Nikki Haley would drop out of the race, only ensuring that it was Donald J. Trump, John, Donald Jessica Trump, that would secure the nomination for the Republican Party. Do you know what a rope-a-dope is? This guy right here, this guy right here, Muhammad Ali, he kind of invented the rope-a-dope. He made it very popular. Very popular. What he would do is he'd get in a boxing ring and he'd stand against the rope with his hands up and he'd let the opponent just beat on him and beat on him and beat on him and beat on him and just swing and swing and swing and swing and give their best fucking effort. Every single ounce of energy would put into knocking Muhammad Ali out as he stood on the ropes. And as soon as the opponent was tired, as soon as the opponent had no energy left, as soon as the opponent used every single punch they could throw and it didn't knock Muhammad Ali out, as soon as they stepped back in their weariness, Muhammad Ali would come off the ropes and he would absolutely pummel the fucking shit out of his opponent. That's what's happening. That's what happened. I know. I'm giving Joe Biden a lot of credit here, but I think I think we should consider this credit that we should give. That this is one of the best political moves that we've seen in modern American history. One of the best. They absolutely beat him to death. The media, the right wing. Oh, he's old. He can't walk. He has dementia. Can he even remember his name? Do you remember that? Obama's running the White House because how could Joe Biden? All that bullshit. And he just stayed steady. He just got up in the morning, put on his fucking shoes, and got on the ropes, baby. Just got on the ropes. Did what he had to do. Did his job. Made sure he didn't get knocked out. Make sure everything was safe. Make sure he wasn't injured. And then, when they got weary, when they got really confident that they were going to knock him out, and they stepped back to take a breather because they were so fucking tired, <laughs> Dark Brandon came off those fucking ropes. Came off those fucking ropes. And absolutely is beating the ever loving shit at a manga. Float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. And he's going to continue to beat the shit out of him. There's one thing that comes with. A politician who has been doing this for his entire life, especially a politician who is old and wise, I guess you could say. A politician who has no other legacy but this. This is it. This is it. Joe, Joe Biden ain't going to go on and open up some big fucking foundation and change the world after this. He's not. When he wins and, and when he retires as the president of the United States for two terms. He'll be in his mid-80s. Mid-80s. That's his legacy. That's it. There ain't much past that. And goddamn, we should expect that the guy would go live out the rest of the few years that he's got. After he's done this deed for our country. He's done his patriotic duty. Because the guy has thought through in more ways than I think we can imagine here on the outside of how he's going to stomp a mud hole in Maga's ass. Not only has the media totally underestimated Joe Biden, not only has Trump and Maga certainly <laughs> fucking underestimate Joe Biden, but I think we the people who are going to go vote for him, who are going to get up and go show support for Joe Biden because we know the alternative. We know the danger of authoritarianism. We know the danger of the fascism that they want to place on us. They want to take women's rights to health care away. They want to they want to criminalize their fucking pregnancies. They want to they want to criminalize people being part of the LGBTQ community or even being allies of the LGBTQ community. They want to get rid of all fucking protections for minorities. 
They want to they want to denigrate migrants coming to this country. Immigrants. This fucking country was built on the fucking on backs of immigrants and slaves, motherfuckers. Not to mention the genocide of Native Americans. That's how this country was built by the white man. Raping, plundering. No wonder they want to make it legal to kill people they don't like and to make people, women, second-class citizens so they can own them as property. It ain't no wonder they want to go back to before 1850, huh? Ain't no fucking wonder. There's one dude standing in their way. One. And he's got the political boxing skills of no one you've ever fucking seen before. And that's Dark Branded. And the guy is going to absolutely fucking trounce this stupid son of a bitch. Now, I don't I don't think the Biden administration or the Biden campaign could have foresaw this Katie Britt rebuttal to the State of the Union. Um, and the saga continues because this weekend, of course, Saturday Night Live was going to make it their cold open. And we really don't know much of Saturday Night Live anymore until there's a cold open like this. Saturday Night Live used to be baked into the culture, right? Everyone watched Saturday Night Live. I mean, fuck, what else was on besides Saturday Night Live on Saturdays on the three stations that you got in this country from Rabbit Ears before cable came along, before satellite came along, before the internet took over? But Scarlett Johansson, by the way, I do want to say, and I said this yesterday on the Sunday rant, she is absolutely fucking drop dead gorgeous. Scarlett Johansson. Not only is she fucking drop dead gorgeous, <laughs> she is one, she she proved on Saturday Night Live, Saturday Night Live, she proved why she she should be revered as one of the best actors that we have right now in our country. Do you know how hard it would be to go fake or act like you're being a person who's fake and fraudulent and trying? It would be very difficult doing what Scarlett Johansson did. If you're wondering how difficult it is, just go watch the tape of Katie Britt trying to do it. <laughs> and then try to be that of that doing that. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. But here's the thing about the Scarlett Johansson video that I think we can look, because history always repeats itself, right? If you just look back at these little nuggets of history, you're like, oh, yeah, that happened before. Oh, and that happened before. A lot of people don't remember Sarah Palin. Some do, some don't. But most people remember the crazy wild shit that Sarah Palin would say. Like, I could see Russia from my front porch. Sarah Palin didn't actually say that. Most of the country who knows who Sarah Palin is thinks that Sarah Palin actually said that. And the reason why they believe Sarah Palin actually said that is because Tina Fey said it in a skit about Sarah Palin. Now, Sarah Palin was MAGA before MAGA was cool, right? Like, she was the kind of Trump crazy before Trump was even on the scene. <laughs> This fucking crazy ass bitch from Alaska was so fucking wild and, and nutty. I mean, you remember when Katie Couric asked her what she reads and what newspapers? She's like, oh, all of them. She's like, well, give me an example of which one. She's like, all, all, all of them. I read all, all, all the reading things. Those things that you read, I read, I read all of those. Yeah. And it was a gotcha question. You remember that? They're like, oh, it was a gotcha, qu gotcha question. She was asking what you read, you fucking moron. Do you read the New York Times? Do you read your local paper in Alaska? What do you fucking read, dummy? What do you read? You could have said nothing. I don't read anything. Fuck reading. Reading's for smart people. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I would say that would, would be the actual answer. But that that interview was so fucking dumb. When Katie Couric asked 
Sarah Palin that? Because she was running as vice president at that point. She was the governor of Alaska. Oh, she was going to fucking kill him, man. She was going to knock him dead. She was pretty. She wore lipstick. She had those glasses and the fucking hair. And she had that accent, that northern accent. And she was really going to knock him dead. Mama Bear. Remember that? Bop, 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 bop. And she was an idiot. <laughs> Just a total fucking buffoon. She made a great mayor. She made a really shitty governor. But she didn't know politics very well. And she definitely didn't know national politics very well. And she was encouraged by the McCain campaign to be herself. Because they needed a woman that would be herself. They thought that would put him over the top against the black dude with the scary last name. The scary name, that is. They really thought a woman would put him over the top. What they didn't expect was that Saturday Night Live would do a skit with Tina Fey, several skits with Tina Fey, and they and Tina Fey would actually say real things that Sarah Palin said. And this parody of her, really, they are a parody of themselves, but it's parody of parody, it became so realistic. So many people believed because Tina Fey would say stuff that Sarah Palin would actually say, word for word, and then she would say stuff that, Sounded like shit that Sarah Palin would say. It became the truth. It became the truth. And that's what's going to happen with Katie Britt. Do you remember what happened to Sarah Palin? Do you remember? Maybe I can remind you. Sarah Palin is no longer relevant. You don't even see her in politics anymore. Every once in a while you see this fucking idiot show up when Donald Trump is somewhere. She couldn't st keep her contributorship for Fox News. She had to resign as governor of Alaska. She's such a shitbox. Her entire fucking family is full of fucking degenerates. Her and her husband got divorced. You know, family values and all that bullshit. Oh, family values. Family values. Family values, my ass. Paved the way for people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert, who is the Wish.com. Sarah Palin. It's too bad we don't have the context of them side by side to know that Sarah Palin was bad, but goddamn, Lauren Bober is like if the crackhead fucked another crackhead and had Sarah Palin and Sarah Palin fucked a crackhead and then had a baby and then that baby was dropped on his fucking head. And then somehow that person was artificially inseminated by some crazy fucking trailer park alien. Boom, Sarah Palin. <laughs> What do you want from me? I don't know what to tell you. And then you have Marjorie Taylor Greene, who shows up at the fucking State of the Union looking like a goddamn circus clown. Looks like a goddamn <laughs> a dildo concession worker. I'm not shitting you. It looks like if she was a concession worker, she would be selling dildos. Dildos here. Hunter's dick. Dildos of Hunter's dick. Hunter's hog. Five dollars. Five dollars. Hunter's hog. It looked like she was a goddamn dildo concession stand worker. A carny. And the look on Joe Biden's face when he saw her. Oh, my God. It's going to go down in the history books. Never in the history of our country has a president been caught on camera walking into the State of the Union, catching the eye and the glimpse of some psychopath and some fucking manga costume and mocking her with just a fucking look. Destroyed Marjorie Taylor Greene. Destroyed her in that moment. But these are the Sarah Palins of our time, and Katie Britt is now one of them. Katie Britt is done. She will not be the senator of Alabama in the next election. Doubt me on that. Sarah, uh, Katie Britt, I would, I would imagine that, it, it would not surprise me if Katie Britt does not finish her entire term. That's how rough it is going to be on Katie Britt. And the reason why it's going to be rough is because there's going to be some old white, white wrinkly ball sack, some fucking moglodite, like Tommy Tuberville, probably some fucking carpetbagger who goes to Alabama and who who absolutely decimates Katie Britt in, in a primary. And Katie Britt probably doesn't even run because she knows she's going to get trounced by some white man, some bigot-ass white KKK motherfucker down in Alabama. No way can she survive. She's done. She's done. She's done. Not only is she a woman in the Republican Party, but now she's a Stepford lifestyle woman in the Republican Party. Hell, I'm going to show you clips of fucking Megyn Kelly making fun of this motherfucker and Coulter. 
Listen, they all fucking hate women. They fucking hate women. And Katie Britt is a woman. And she pretended to be the woman of women in the Republican Party. And even the women hate her women in the Republican Party fucking hate her ass now. She's done. Good. Fuck them. Take out the trash. Speaking of trash, I got a clip of you, or of Liz Cheney, showing you who she really is. I've been telling you for a long time that don't trust Liz Cheney. She's not a hero. Fuck her. Fuck Adam Kinzinger. Fuck Mitt Romney. Fuck those motherfuckers. Fuck them. We got to let these people fight their war with Trump and not befriend these stupid bastards. Because Liz Cheney, and I know this has been their goal for a long time, is to revive the Republican Party. Folks, it's fucking dead. It's fucking dead. They're all in with Trump. And not only all in with Trump, Trump has sent his family to take over the RNC to steal every fucking penny they got. Because he's out of them. He's out of fucking pennies. He ain't got none. Not a penny won. He's fucking broke. And not only is he broke financially, but now he's broke politically. And Dark Brandon is off the ropes, bitch. Dark Brandon is off the fucking ropes, and he is going to beat the ever-loving shit at a, at a Donald Trump and MAGA extremist. He's going to pound their ass. And we should be right there with him, fucking mocking them and throwing punches and fucking getting in the fight. Because this ain't a matter of this ain't a matter of if this is a democracy or a republic, democracy versus autocracy. It is a matter of how many fucking ballots we are going to pile these fucking fascists under. That is the question now. The wind is at our fucking backs, folks. We need to get as many of these fucking women's rights referendums in these states as we possibly can. We need to make sure that this turnout is a turnout that they've never fucking seen before. We need to get together and tell tell each other in one voice. We will not fucking quit. We will not. We never say die. The other thing that Joe Biden has done, that Dark Brandon has come off the ropes as he's beating the shit out of Trump and MAGA, is he really he really quieted down the whole Palestinian free Palestine from the river to the sea bullshit. I saw the old ceasefire signs at the State of the Union <laughs> from Talib and the like. Really shut them the fuck up. And they should. They should shut the fuck up. They should shut the fuck up at this point. Now, if they don't, that's a, that's their problem, right? It's going to be their, at their political peril here. Not Joe Biden's political peril. I understand that a lot of people are concerned about that movement and concerned about the no labels, labels movement. Don't let it have oxygen. What we need to give oxygen the most to is the threat of white Christian nationalism and what the fuck these people want to do and how they want to treat women, how they want to treat children, how they want to treat the LGBTQ community. And they're going to do anything and everything they possibly can to fucking undermine our democracy. And our constitution, they want to shred it up and make Trump the dictator so they can tell us what the fuck we can and can't do and who we can and can't be. Big government style fascism is what they want. And they want it all under Trump. And they want to control more than just your body. They want to control your community. They want to control your family. They want to control your home and your property. I know it sounds crazy. It sounds like I got a big tinfoil hat on. But it's what they want. They're saying it out loud. They're telling you. Mark Robinson, I played you the clip. They don't want women to vote. The reason why they don't want women to vote is because they know they'll vote to codify their goddamn rights. And they're trying to strip the rights away from women so that they can own their uteruses, so that they can make sure that only white babies are born. Jesus Christ, they're all fucking yelling and screaming about one white woman getting killed by a migrant. One. But they just can't concern themselves with children being slaughtered in schools by fucking AR-15s. Nah, that's cool. No problem. I mean, that makes the gun manufacturers a lot of money, Tony. Huh. Don't you understand that there's a lot of money involved and they put a lot of money in our pockets? Don't you get it? So spare me the bullshit. It's time that we fight and we fight the way we need to fight with this new brand of liberalism. 
And I know, I know a lot of people don't think that this is the case. But the fuck them fam in this commentary has allowed for there to be plenty of space to be made for people out there trying to get the message across and trying to pound the narrative into the country's head that, hey, your democracy, your life, your lifestyle is at stake. It, voting is the most important right you have today because tomorrow they may take it away if you give it to the wrong motherfuckers. And they're saying it out loud. We don't have to fucking twist their words. We don't have to make it seem like it's something that it's not. There's not a lot of spin involved. We just have to stay focused. That's all we have to do. We have to stay focused and point our outrage strategically towards the battle at the ballot box. And if we really focus in and make sure we cheer on Uncle Joe as he's coming off the ropes and Dark Brandon is throwing punches, we need to encourage as he fucking beats the shit and pounds the ever-loving life at a MAGA and these MAGA extremists. And cheer on the MAGA extremists when they're just standing there taking a beating. Being broke, not being able to raise money. Fuck, they can't even sell 400-hour sneakers anymore. They're out of that idea. So much so that the entire nation laughs at Trump and his supporters in real time when he posts on social media during the Oscars. And Jimmy Kimmel reads his post on True Social word for word and people laugh at him. They're lat. This country hates that motherfucker. But most of all, they think him and his supporters are just a fucking band of fucking jokes. Jokers. Circus clowns. That's what they are. And these are the people that want to control our country. These are the people that want to make decisions for us and our policies and our families and our communities. <laughs> you got to be kidding, right? So let's make it to where there's only one choice. Only one choice and one choice only. Vote for serious policymakers all the way up and down the ballot. And if you see an R next to their name, they're a Nazi. And that is not serious policy. It's just not. It's not going to be. It never will be. But you know that I will never give up here Two hours every single weekday, Monday through Friday, noon Eastern, 11 Central, 9 Pacific on YouTube, Facebook, the Twitch machine, X, Chan, and Instagram. I am so happy to have all you new viewers here. That's right. We have new viewers. We reached 30,000 on YouTube. 30,000 subscribers and climbing. Holy shit. We ain't, I don't know. It's like over. Yeah. Over 5,000 in the last month. 5,000 new people who have subscribed to the U Tony Michaels YouTube channel. And I was banned for two weeks of that. <laughs> I was in YouTube jail. And it's like we were getting 5,000 subscribers. So let's not stop now. Let's not back down. Never say die and never touch that fucking dial. We'll be right back right after this. We'll be right back. Mark. 60 seconds. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast. Are you ready for best pizza of life? Bring friends down to Pepperoni Hug Spot. Our chefs make pizza with heart and special touch. Cheese, pepperoni, vegetable, and more secret things. Need delivery? Pizzas come fast. Knock, knock, who's there? Pizza magic. Eat pepperoni hug spot pizza. Your tummy say thank you. Your mouth say, mmm. -hmm. Pepperoni hug spot. It's like family, but with more cheese. Catch Tony's Twitch stream, The Shit List Roundup, at twitch.tv slash the Tony Michaels. We're back to the king of brilliance. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast. A lot of people are saying we should get banned more. <laughs> 5,000. 
Right after the band? Hell, you should get banned more. Jesus Christ, Tony, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, boy, welcome back to the Tony Michaels Podcast, the home of the fuck'em fam. Let me tell you what this show brings. Because a lot of, uh, Ann says, I'm one of the 5,000. Annie says, I'm one of the 5,000. Welcome, Annie. Welcome. Uh, (laughs) They're saying on Twitch, more bands. (laughs) Let me tell you something what comes with being part of the fuck'em fam here at the Tony Michaels Podcast. Because it's not just that you get to listen to my sweet, 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 beautiful voice two hours every single weekday, Monday through Friday, noon Eastern, 11 Central. What comes with it is we got a fan. And it's like with more cheese, just better, you know? (laughs) And let me show you how you can get the most out of the fuck'em fam you possibly can. Because it's not just the show, it's the family that we're building, the coalition. Go to thetonymichaels.com, hit subscribe at the very top of the page. You can pan on down. You can see the current episode right here. That's today's episode. I always have the current episode there at the very top. You can visit the stores. I'll show you how to get there soon. But I want you to go on down to memberships. And I want you to look here. You can join the Patreon for free. And really, if you want to buy a membership that helps keep this microphone powered on against fascism, um, that's the main thing. But if you really want to get on what the hell the fucking fam's doing, if you really want to see what this coalition's about more than just this show alone, go join the Discord server. You're going to want to get in there. And I know, I know, I know a lot of people are like, I don't want to learn a new thing, Tony. It's not that difficult. It's not that hard to learn. And the, that's where the coalition gathers. That's where we cross pollinate against these on these social media platforms. The Facebook people are there on Discord. The Instagram people are there on Discord. The Twitter people are there on Discord. The YouTube people, the Twitch people, everyone gathers in the dive bar. That's what it is. It's the dive bar of democracy there at the Discord server. And there's a ton of stuff to do in there. Not only can you share pictures and share memes and gather up memes to go use to weaponize against Moglodites, the Cheeto hump and fuck nuggets in the comment section, but there's also a book club. Right now, they're they're doing Rachel Bittekoffer's book. Um, how hit them where it hurts. How to save democracy by beating Republicans at their own game. Sponsored by the Library of Democracy. They're doing that book and book club. I believe. Dr. Rachel Whitakoff is going to join us for one or two of those. I'm hoping the actual author is going to join us in that book club. And there was dozens of people, even though some of them were, it was Friday afternoon. They were a little getting on the sauce, but that's okay. We don't discriminate against folks that want to smoke and drink at the dive bar. By God, it's the fucking dive bar of democracy. That's what it's intended to be. So if you're new to the show and you're just listening, you're like, this guy's fucking nuts. This guy's been what I've been looking for in a goddamn left-wing commentator. No one talks like this son of a bitch on the left. Well, you're not going to find anything else like this on the left, but I'm telling you, there is a whole hell of a lot more that comes along with being part of the fucking fam than just this show. And that's the beautiful part. And it's not its not mine, it's theirs. It's the fucking fam's. The Discord server, yeah, it's got my name on it. But it really is. It's the coalition of people that want to save democracy. And they're not going to sit back and not fight. And they're not going to sit back and not say the shit that needs to be said. So get your ass in the Discord. And I know, I know, I know it's it's a new thing. But here's what you can do. It's really easy to download the app if you have a smartphone. That's the best, easiest way to get in there is the app. That's right. You don't have to necessarily have to have a computer. If you got a computer, you can get that that too. But the easiest way to get Discord is go download the app. Just download it. And really, honestly, if you click the Discord link here on eatdonymichaels.com, it should give you the proper prompts to download the app, get the app, sign up under your email, Get you a username and get in the Discord and verify. Once you join the Discord, click the green check mark. And this, I know it sounds like, you know, like Tony, are you going to charge me to be in this? No, there's no, there's no, you don't have to pay anything. You don't have to pay anything to be part of this fucking pro-democracy coalition. 
You don't have to give anything besides your ideas, besides your voice. That's all you got to do. Because I'm only one microphone. You're thousands and thousands and thousands of microphones. And I know, I know the best thing for our democracy is for people to share ideas. That's the best thing for our democracy. And to teach each other, learn from each other. God damn, they learn from each other all day, every day over there in the Discord. They're always talking about new things and new avenues. How can we do this? How can we do that? What's this? Where's that? Hey, how do we register people to vote in this state? Oh, well, just go to the library of democracy. There's plenty of references in there. How do I get this? How do I do that? How do I, how do I know this? What's this thing here? There's always someone in the Discord. And if there's not, they'll find that we'll find the fucking answer because we're together. This is a coalition. This is a family, by God. And the blood runs deep. So there's a hell of a lot more to this show than just listen to this, this beautiful face for two full hours. There's a hell of a lot more to it. And you should go join the Discord and find out exactly what there is. Now, let's talk about the the, 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 the shop, the store. So you go to the top of EatTonyMichaels.com. You hit links. But if you want to go to the Commie Falls gift shop, because everyone knows that we here at the Tony Michaels broadcast, podcast broadcast live every single weekday for two full hours from the corporate headquarters. Hey. And we have a gift shop here at Commie Falls now. We have the Commie Falls gift shop. You just click store and boom, shakalaka, you can go into the store there, into the Commie Falls gift shop. We'll be adding products. Now, if you want to see our full line of products, just head on over to the TonyMichaels.com. You can click the merch stores right here. And if you just want to see the featured products on the Commie Falls gift shop, they are right here. Everyone's um, going gangbusters over these fucking keychains. Here, let me show them to you. There's a lot of things you can do with these things. You can put them on, you can put your keys on them, your Antifa corporate headquarter keychains on them. You can, put, you can wear them as earrings, huh? Nose rings, huh? What about eyebrow rings? A uh, necklace, huh? You can even uh, connect it to your Prince Albert if you want to. I don't know if you've got one, but if you got one, you can hook it to your Prince Albert. Why not? It makes a little good charm. You can even put it on your dog's collar, your cat's collar, co dog tifa, cat tifa. Anything you want to. So a lot of people like the uh, the keychains. And we want to thank everyone for making orders for the fuck em keychains. It helps support the laboratory. And they are actually made by the laboratory. So if you get these and they kind of smell like rats' little hands. They, oh, it smells like cheese. It smells like cheese. Why does it smell like cheese? It smells like fuck nuggets. It smells like cheese. It's because um, it's made by a rat, possibly. <laughs> no. so thank you for all the orders uh, from the commie falls gift shop uh, it helps support the show thank you for all the brand new memberships out there on patreon there's been several people um, brand new and I, the other thing i want to mention before we move on to some of the news is all the people who supported uh, the live stream this weekend of me getting my tattoo that's right i got my my part of my microphone finished up i won't be getting another more ink in me until this fall uh, so we finished up for now uh, on that part of my arm. Let me see if I can show you here. I want to show the audience. Um, here is, um, here we go. Here is the, uh, real quick. Here's the uh, the image of the tattoo. Um, so this is the first session over here that I got. And this is after on Saturday. Now, if you look really close, right up, right up at the top there, you can see the phrase, this machine kills fascists is on the microphone. Turned out so great. I'm really excited. I want to thank everyone who became part of Team Tattoo. Uh, I'm going to be sending Owen a tip over the next few days. So uh, Owen is the artist that did this fantastic work uh, on my arm. And so if you want to make sure Owen gets a big, big tip, just go to the TonyMichaels.com. Click the Team Tattoo Fund. I know it says closed, but you can contribute whatever you want in there. Or if you just want to send a few dollars in the tip jar, whatever, just say it's for the tattoo artist tip. And then I'll make sure he gets it. So um, Owen did such a fantastic job. I can't wait to go visit Owen again in the fall for the Statue of Liberty on the other side of my arm. So I want to thank everyone who who did that this weekend with me. Super fun, super fun. All right, let's move on to some some newsicles, right? We got to move move on to some news. 
Well, let's see here. What do we what do we got in the news? What what's in the news? Is there like a political race going on or something? Is there like a is there like an election or something going on? Is that the thing? Is that what they're doing? Uh, here is the Republican talking point, and this is the one you're going to hear over and over and over again. This is the one that they think is going to work for him, but it fell flat on its face in Katie Britt's um, little lie rebuttal that she gave. That's right. It was a lie rebuttal um, that she gave live on TV. Um, but this is what they're going to go with. They think it's a great message, so they're going to send all the white men out to sell this message because Katie Britt couldn't sell it. But let's listen. He's allowed these illegal invaders to come into this country. And that's what they are. They're invading our country. They're coming here illegally. Uh, they're bringing with them crime, drugs. Uh, women are being raped. Up to 70% of the women uh, coming across the border have been raped multiple times. Okay. So that's what they're going to go with. They're going to go with women are being raped. They know that's a big hot button issue right now in this election is women, women want the rights to their bodily autonomy. So like, you know what we'll do? You know, we'll, we'll say the word women raped, uh, but don't mention that we're going to force them to carry their rapist baby. You know, don't mention that part. I'm not going to mention that, but we're going to force them to carry their rapist baby. And more than likely, the rapists aren't going to look like migrants. They're probably going to look like me if you want to know the honest truth. You're going to look like a white man because that really are the statistics. That's what it really is. White men rape more women than migrants. It's, it, it, white men create, commit more crime than migrants, especially MAGA white criminals fucking ridiculous are you shitting me this is this is the line they're gonna go with folks they have nothing else everything else is done it's all gone they've stolen all the money from the rnc they're gonna steal every fucking last dime and give it to donald trump because he's fucking broke he ain't got a goddamn pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of soon they're gonna they're gonna fucking take all his goddamn property he had to have someone else put up the 90 90 million dollar bond he kept saying on stage over the weekend that he put up a bond he did not put up a bond he's full of shit that motherfucker had to go bake some fucking rich person he probably had to suck someone's dick if you want to know the honest truth and you talk you talk about fucking copper mot that someone's got on somebody that's a little fucking dangerous don't you think a president of the united states who owes some some person some ceo somewhere Who's got ties to Russian oligarchs? Hmm, seems kind of convenient, doesn't it? I don't know. Maybe it does to you. Maybe it doesn't to me. Fuck, I don't know. But I would imagine that Donald Trump had to suck on some dick to get that ninety million dollar. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know who just gives a motherfucker ninety million dollars. You know what I mean? Or puts up a bond for him. Have you ever went to your parents? You know, when you're younger, you're like, ah, oh, the bank won't let me get a car because my fucking credit sucks. So will you sign over? Will you sign the loan with me? Co-sign? And they're like, fuck no, you're a deadbeat. You can't hold a job. You fucking drink too much. All you do is smoke weed. What do you and you want me to co-sign on a loan with you? What are you fucking nuts? Please, 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 please. <laughs> what did he have to do? That's what I want to know. What did he have to do to get this person to put up a 90 million dollar bond for him <laughs> i mean motherfucker just doesn't put up a 90 million dollar bond for some some bitch does he or do they i don't know i i mean in the world that i come from you know it's kind of like quid pro quo right that's how these white guys are and you know it was some fucking white dude to put up his fucking 90 million dollar bond it wasn't no black woman that gave him the money for a 90 million dollar bond. <laughs> she damn well guarantee that shit what do you have to do? Is Trump sucking dick for money? I I mean, he'll do anything else. He'll sell fucking shitty sneakers. He'll sell never surrender t-shirts. Surely he'll suck some dick. Oh, Tony, that's that's homophobic. Homophobic? It's not homophobic. I'm not saying he's gay. I'm just saying, you know, someone who wants to give someone $90 million probably is going to want, you know, some sort of fucking payment. Just saying. Uh, speaking of people who are down and out and broke, Peter Navarro uh, has to report to prison on March 19th. Poor guy. Couldn't happen to a better motherfucker. You know the best part about Peter Navarro's sentence? He's got to serve every single fucking day of this. 
There is no good time for Peter Navarro's sentence. He's got to serve every last fucking minute of it. Look at this guy. <laughs> ah, it's funny. He stole a bunch of people's money, too, for his uh, actual defense uh, of his criminal charges of contempt of Congress that he was definitely going to lose. And he stole all their money and lost the case when he could have just, I don't know, fucking gave up the evidence to Congress, which he has to give it to Jack Smith anyways. So why wouldn't he just give it to Congress? Oh, that's right. They were trying to protect the former guy. So that couldn't happen to a better guy. So that's news. Uh, let's see. I'm going to play you the Jimmy or some of the Jimmy Kimmel thing. I can't play all of it because they'll fucking, and it's probably copyright and it's ABC. Them fucking bastards. Them fucking bastards, man. Yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't really put any of the SNL. I can't play the SNL shit from Scarlett Johansson either. Because they ain't fucking put a copyright. They'll turn off the fucking video and shit. Stupid sons of bitches. Um, but here, I want to show you this video of Liz Cheney. And a lot of people were really mad at me for attacking people that they didn't want me to attack. And then I turned out to be absolutely fucking correct because I almost damn every time. Um, and I'm glad. I'm happy that Glenn's in our coalition now. I don't know if Glenn's still talking about voting or if he's still talking at all. He should be embarrassed if, he, if he's not talking about voting. But I hope he's still talking about voting. Uh, I need to check in on him. Maybe we will today. Uh, but I want to check in on this fucking slug, Liz Cheney. A lot of people give me a lot of criticism for knocking her. They're like, Tony, she's a hero. I'm like, no, she's not. No, she is fucking not. This fucking piece of trash would strip away and criminalize pregnancies just like any of these other fucking Nazis. She would make sure that she would smash women's rights with a fucking hammer and not look twice. Fuck Liz Cheney fuck her because i've been saying it the whole time liz cheney ain't doing this for her country and really she ain't even doing it for her as much as she's doing it for her party these people have always been party over country and it is never clearer than this fucking slug right here that's right she's a scumbag scumbag slug and all these never trumpers and everything want to make out like she's some kind of fucking hero don't let them listen I am not opposed to Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger, Mitt Romney, and whatever former Republicans, Chris Christie, to fight a war against Trump. Whatever they want to do. Fight your war, motherfucker. It'll just make it that much easier than uh, on us when we beat this son of a bitch to pivot to your dumb asses. Because this fucking scumbag would take away women's rights in a heartbeat. And guess what? That ain't okay with me. And that ain't any kind of ally that I want on my fucking team. Nope, not going to happen. She's not my friend. Neither is Adam Kinzinger. Neither is fucking Mitt Romney or Chris Christie, for that matter. If you're wanting to take away women's fucking rights and you want to criminalize pregnancies, fuck you. Fuck you. Not going to happen. I'm not going to let you ostracize other people in our society just to, so you can make bones in your political movement. You can suck my dick. Fuck you, Liz Cheney. Fuck you. And everyone gave me shit, uh, not everyone, but a lot of people give me shit. Most people agree with me about this fucking Nazi here, Darth Vader Jr., as I refer to her. That I've been telling you that she doesn't give a shit about America. She only cares about her party. Only her party. That's all she's concerned about. Listen to what Liz Cheney says. It looks like it's most likely to be Donald Trump and Joe Biden, but we don't know that for sure. Uh, and I, I think that it's going to require making an assessment about sort of um, how we can most effectively mobilize people in both parties and mobilize independents, frankly, to stand against Donald Trump. Ooh, sounds um, good. Okay. I think, you know, there's a lot that has to be done to begin to rebuild the Republican Party. Oh, there it is. There's the truth. There's the truth. They always they always leave out that little nugget that you need to have, right, in the very beginning. They want to make you feel good. They want to make you feel good about welcoming their asses in, in the fucking... In in the in the fucking party, right? <laughs> Allison says Tony has a crush on Liz. Oh yeah, I have a total crush on <laughs> fucking railing on her. Listen, you know what's funny about this is that I I almost bet two years from now, maybe maybe three, could be three years from now. Three years from now, um, everyone would be like, "Whoa, fuck! 
what who this Liz Cheney is a fucking scary. She's saying crazy shit to try to get elected president of the United States. Holy fucking dog shit. Why is she saying this crazy shit? She used to be for democracy. And, and, and people are going to be like, well, there was one motherfucker. There was one motherfucker that was willing to stand out from the crowd and yell and scream and point at Liz Cheney and say she's a fucking fascist. Don't believe her. She's not a hero. Don't believe her. She's not for democracy. She's fooling you. She's tricking you. She's trying to dupe you. I will be right. I will be right on Liz Cheney. You fucking hide and watch. I will be right on her every fucking time. So if it may, means I got to have a crush on her, then I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I'll have a little crush on her. Liz Cheney until we got to smash that fascist into oblivion. It's fine by me. It's what we do here at the Tony Michaels podcast. All right. Uh, let's see. What other videos I got to show you? These crazy fucks. Oh, um, there is a there is a, a video out there of Alex Jones that I found. Um, Alex Jones is really fucking pissed off at Donald Trump. Um, and here's the cracks in in the fascist universe. But really, it's more about outrage. If you really want to see how these fucking idiots use something to grift off of, here it is. Now, here it is. Um, they, they He's trying to get people's attention is what he's trying to do because he's out of fucking money and out of time. But here's Alex Jones knocking on Donald Trump. Of course, this is really convenient as it comes from a time that Donald Trump has already won the nomination. So let's let's see, hear any Alex. Any more of this from Trump? Yeah. Any more of this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm going to have to go on the warpath. Yeah. War, yeah. I, I just cannot Good. Good. take this. I cannot put my head down on the pillow at night and say that I'm a true person to everybody. Yeah. When I've already held my nose yeah. because of the overwhelming good yeah. he's doing yeah. and all the persecution and put up with stuff like this. <laughs> It'd be like if your mother created this great Thanksgiving meal and cooked for two days to get it ready, and it's this beautiful meal on the table, and your mother comes out and pulls her pants down and shits all over the table. That would be a, quite a sight. It's almost it's almost like Alex Jones has watched his mom cook a meal and shit all over the table, isn't it? These people always with their projection. <laughs> Alex Jones is talking about Donald Trump's embracing of the vaccine. That's what he's talking about. Trump apparently posted something about how he did warp speed or some shit. And they fucking hate that. And the reason why they hate that is because their fucking listeners, their followers, their audience have been duped into believing all the QAnon bullshit about the vaccine and anything surrounding COVID-19. So they have to placate to their audience. This is what I've been talking about for a long time in audience building and why when you listen to certain media types, you're like, why are they saying it like that? Because they have to. Because they built their audience that way. I'm not building my audience that way. I'm building my audience in a way that um, allows you to be dissent from my opinion. That doesn't that doesn't make you have to believe every fucking thing that I believe. I just give you what the hell is happening and you go out and find out for yourself. But I do want to point out here. I do want to point out something that is very, very, very important. Something that he says in the very beginning. Listen again. See any more of this. From yeah. Trump. Mm -hmm. Any more of this. I'm going to have to go on the warpath politically. I'm going to have to go on the warpath. I'm going to have to go on the warpath politically. Now, here's what you need to know about the two people of the videos that I just showed you. Alex Jones and Liz Cheney. Okay? All right? You have old guard establishment Republican and Darth Vader Jr., Liz Cheney, and then you have the absolute fucking psychopath lunatic fringe of Alex Jones and Infowars. And they're all attacking Donald Trump. <laughs> they're all attacking Donald Trump. They're all attacking him. He's taking fire. This is this is how fascism, this is how they eat each other. When you look at this stuff, this is how it works. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to stand back and point and show the country how fucking dangerous these people are. Not just him, not just Trump, but Liz Cheney too. And if we show them how dangerous we are, and they are, and there should be never a Republican that should control anything in government ever again, and that the party is dead, which it is, it's dead. It's dead. D-E-A-D, -E dead. We're dragging around a dead body around this country. It's fucking ridiculous, really, if you want to know the honest truth. And we were talking about this this morning in the producer's corner. Because we were talking about, you know, can the Republican Party be revived? Or will it be like a third party? Now, 
I believe the only path forward in our two-party system is for the Republican Party to finally admit that it's dead and all the Republicans, the conservatives, move on. The problem is, is we're going to have the same problem 20 years, 30 years from now. The Republicans played the long game. They played the long fascism game and then bailed it as conservatism for a long time. They really wanted a plutocracy. They wanted the rich folks in this country to own and control everything. And they thought the best way to do that was to dress it up as conservatism. They didn't understand that building a plutocracy or the, or the feeling of a plutocracy over, the, over a four decade, the slow, long game, that it would end up to where a bunch of fascists want a dictator and a king and a fearer. But it did. That's the long game. And they played that game. Liz Cheney played that game. Mitt Romney played that game. Mitch McConnell played that game. You get a, You catch my drift here? These people, these fucking scumbags who are the establishment, played this long game to fascism. And they want to play that long game again. They want to get rid of Trump, and they want to play that long game again. They want to reset to play that long game again. Fuck that shit. Listen, there should not be a... a a major party in this country that does not fucking defend women's rights. Period. If you are saying that you're conservative and you are not willing to stand up and preserve women's bodily autonomy and their rights to health care and the LGBT community's right to exist, black and brown people's right to fucking exist, okay? If you're not doing that as a simple bar, then you are not a serious fucking party. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You don't get to play in this country anymore with the politics if that's what you're going to do. Because we want to actually move on and have real fucking conversations and set real policy to move this country forward. Not have these old fucking arguments from 1850. Okay, you can go fuck yourself. You and your fucking white Christian nationalism. You can stick it up your fucking ass all the way. All the fucking way. Fuck you. We're not having that shit. So if there is a new party that emerges from the Republican Party's uh, death and their funeral, which it appears that there is almost going to have to be, then they better be on board to, for protecting people's rights so that we can actually have debates about things that we have disagreements about where our ideologies don't match, but you are, we should not, we as the pro democracy coalition should not welcome any major party anywhere that is not on board to make sure that you are in the modern era of rights and fucking diversity and inclusion and making sure that everyone has the same fucking same equity under the law. If you can't do that, you can go fuck yourself. And we will fight back and beat back on you every fucking time. And that's my point about Liz Cheney and this fucking scumbag. You think the, the likes of Liz Cheney and this guy, whose common en enemy is Trump, you think Liz Cheney's going to come back and just change her mind and have a party where, oh, yeah, you know what? I mean, my personal opinion isn't that abortion should be legal, but, you know, the Constitution says and the liberty of people say, so I shouldn't fucking be telling people what they can and can't do. You think that's going to happen with Liz Cheney? You think she's the beacon of liberty in the Republican Party? <laughs> Come on now. Come on. She's still she's still tied to this guy. No matter what you want to do, no matter how you want to say it, how you want to spin it, Liz Cheney spent 190 days denying the election in 2020. That's right. She spent 190 days denying the election in 2020 until she didn't. It took her 190 days. She was the third in charge in the Republican caucus. 190 days to get to the floor of the house and say, hey, motherfucker, hey, hey, it wasn't stolen. It's a lie. It's a big fucking lie. But they're no longer lying about the Republican Party and what they're going to do. Fuck Trump's family is saying it. They put his daughter-in-law in charge of fleecing all the money from the Republican Party. And honestly, I can't be happier for him. Can't. I can't be happier for him. Because then you got fucking Booger Sugar Jr. over here saying the same goddamn thing. Go for it, baby. Do it. Tell us how you're going to destroy yourselves and the Republican Party. Get it. I think the RNC is going to be a little bit more of that old school establishment. Uh, that 
that Republican Party, frankly, no longer exists outside of the D.C. beltway. But, it, you know, it takes a little while to make that transition. But again, I think, you know, the they're transitioning. So they're they're for trans parties. Right. They don't like transgender people, but boy, they sure like trans parties they are transitioning from from Republican to full on mega Nazis. What an idiot. The moves that happened today, uh, I, I think that's the that's the final blow. Uh, people have to understand that America first. Why is he talking about blow? That's the final blow. <sighs> blow, I love blow. <laughs> I love blow. As a matter of fact, what a fucking douchebag. The MAGA movement is the new Republican Party. That is conservatism today. <laughs> that is conservatism. You need to look up the fucking word conservatism, doesn't he? <laughs> you need to look it up, son. Eh, it's not what you think it is. You use that word. You know what that word means. Um, all right, here is uh, talking about some psychopathic shit. Here's uh, the fentanyl Fuhrer. He ain't got no pennies to give, and he ain't going to give no pennies. Let's listen. And I will not give one penny yeah, to any one. school that, that is a vaccine that mandate one. or a mask mandate. I will not give one penny because I don't have no pennies. I have none. I actually had to suck some guy's dick because I'm a dick taster. You know very well. Very, excuse me. You know very well that I want to be a dick taster. Maybe only for a day, but I was dick taster for that one day. I sucked Elon, but he wouldn't give me. So then I had to suck some other guy. I had to taste dick. I did. I did it. I'm telling you. I didn't do it for me. I didn't do it for me. I did it for you because I am you and you are me and I taste taste that dick for you. I don't know. I, I'm only making assumptions here. I know that the guy's fucking broke. He can't, he can't fucking put up. Listen, if he was really a billionaire, dude could come up with $90 million to get a bond. Okay. Dude could get $90 million. If you're a billionaire, think, think about, think about a billion dollars, right? Just think about how much fucking money that is, right? And this guy claims he's worth nine mil, nine billion. Okay, so think of billion and then times that by nine, which he's not even close to a fucking. He's not. He's not even close to a fucking billionaire. Not even fucking close. Not even close. This guy is fucking broke. He doesn't have. Not only does Donald Trump not have any money. He owes more money than he's got. He's like most Americans, really, honestly. It's maybe why these fucking toothless rednecks appreciate him. Like, yeah, I, I, listen, I got, I got a big payment on my trailer house and even a big, bigger payment on my pickup truck, okay? And I ain't got a fucking nickel in the bank. I live paycheck to paycheck. We we got we got to afford them them Twinkies and Marlboros in between the trailer payment and the truck payment, okay? It's fucking that's real, man. This guy ain't worth a shit, and he ain't worth a nickel. He ain't. Maybe that's why they like his plight so much. But they give him this money, like, look here, we we can sacrifice a carton of Marlboros every week. And we give that we give that money that we don't smoke in them that carton of Marlboros. We give that directly to Donald Jessica Trump, you know, because he's our Jesus. Here yeah, we got a picture of him on the crucifix on the wall. We pray to him every night. He gives us exactly what we want. He makes it all right for us to be bigots. He makes it all right for us to us to be fucking racist and and backwards. And lie. Oh man, can we lie? Does he let us lie? Boy, he lets us lie. He's the he's the greatest Republican Jesus we've ever had ever in the history of ever. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. This guy's gonna take away what money from what schools? Listen to him. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. All right. This guy used to be president. Okay, I don't know if you know that. He should know how it works. He doesn't, clearly. All right, so the majority, the majority of public funding for public education is not from the federal government. It's not. It's a, it's a big secret. Most of the fucking, most of, most of the federal funding that comes 
two schools is not the majority of their funding. It's just not. The majority, listen here, the majority is from states. Now, different states fund their schools in different ways. They have different ways of doing it. Most of it is tax collection. And most of it is property tax collection. And the reason why it's property tax collection is because it's really easy to dictate within a district, a school district, like a geographical area. I can't even believe I got to fucking explain this to maggots. Jesus Christ. God damn it. When you guys go pay fucking property tax on your little lot that your trailer sits on, the part that goes to the school, that's you paying for the school, dumbass. Oh, my God. Fuck me running. Anywho, <laughs> most of the time, it is fucking property tax that pays for the schools. And the reason why is because it's really easy to draw an imaginary line, a boundary for a school district and say, all the property that's in this boundary is in this school district. So when you're in this school district and you pay property tax, that money goes to the, this X amount of money goes to the fucking schools. Jesus fucking Christ. And almost every single time, the state, the guys that the guys and gals that you elect to the state, so be careful who you're voting for on that fucking ballot, are the ones who dictate how much property tax they're going to take for the schools and how much fucking money they're going to give to those schools. It's not complicated stuff to understand. It's called government. It's called civics. It's called fucking democracy. It's a republic, you dumb motherfuckers. Our democracy is a constitutional republic. This is how it fucking works. And this fucking chucklehead thinks that he can just make states not pay for schools because they have vaccine mandates. Not to mention that the reason why we don't have so many I don't know, childhood diseases like polio, polio, motherfucker wants polio. Trump wants to bring back polio. The reason why we don't have things like polio, well, we didn't until these fucking idiots took over some of our policies. And like in Florida, where fucking diseases are running rampant among children because they're not doing vaccine mandates for children. It's not fucking complicated, people. It ain't hard shit to know. It is not hard shit to know. Stop reading your fucking Facebook page. Stop it, you fucking Cheeto humping fuck nuggets. God damn it. Get with the fucking truth. Know the truth and go forward. Fuck. Me running. Cheeto humping fuck nuggets. Stop believing this piece of trash. Let's listen to him again how he's going to give children diseases. And I will not give one how penny to any school penny. that has a vaccine mandate or a Thank mask you. mandate. Why, when is the last time you've seen a school with a ma mask mandate, you fucking piece of sludge? Actually, frankly, through the flu season, schools should have fucking ma mask mandates. It would save us a shitload of taxpayer dollars. A shitload. If we just, if we as a country said, hey, that whole mask thing during the pandemic, that really fucking helped not spread COVID-19 and the flu. We had less of the flu when we were all forced to wear fucking masks during flu season. It's almost like there's correlation. This is the dumbest, stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. And it's only nine seconds long. This is only nine seconds of his fucking puked up diatribe. Nine seconds, and it's the dumbest shit I've ever heard of. Not only does he want to fucking criminalize women's pregnancies, not only does he want to roll back rights for the LGBTQ people, not only does he want to fucking round up brown and black people to deport them, to repatriate them from planes, put them in staging concentration campgrounds. This motherfucker wants to give school-age children diseases because he just can't figure out that fucking vaccine. And guess where this comes from, folks? The guy that I just showed you not too long ago, Alex Jones. That's why this fucking chucklehead stands on stage and says this. Because some asshole comes in his office and says, Sir, Alex Jones is really mad at you. Alex Jones is really mad. And boy, his followers are really mad at you. Really fucking mad. Well, what are they saying? Are they saying I taste too much dick? 
because I like to taste dick. Please don't tell me it's because I like to taste dick. No, sir, it's not because you like to taste dick. It's because you talk too much that you love vaccines and they want you to hate vaccines. Okay, I can do that. I can do that. I'll hate vaccines. I'll hate back. What what happens if we hate vaccines? Well, a ton of children are going to get diseases and they're probably going to die. Or they're just going to live the rest of their life with the side effects of those diseases. Oh, you mean little children? Little ones? Little bitty children? Yes, sir. Well, fuck those children. Fuck them. I'm for me and me for me. He, I, as long as I get to taste dick. What do you want from me? This is the joke that they are. This is a are this is a fucking joke. You want children to fucking have diseases like polio? And it's not just about the ch- because you can go get your children vaccinated, but some motherfuckers can't get their children vaccinated for the people who cannot get vaccinated. It's it, they're not able because of the diseases that they are born with or they already have the purposes that we as society protect them from diseases like polio by getting everyone else fucking vaccinated. You fucking pieces of garbage. You pieces of fucking shit. This is, science is not out on this one. It works, bitch. I have to bring this up too. This is another narrative that came out of the weekend of Katie Britt's little stupid fucking rebuttal. Is that, are you better off than we were four years ago? Motherfucker, it is March 11th, 2024, bitch. If you want me to tell you about four fucking years ago and how great it was, let's have that fucking conversation. MAGA is so goddamn stupid, right? Think about this. For the next eight months, for the next eight months, MAGA is going to be asking us a question. And the question is, but are you better off than four years ago? (laughs) <laughs> Motherfucker, we are weeks away from every single one of us being subjected to the Tiger King. Okay? The entire country was fucking subjected to Joe Exotic, the Tiger King, because of four fucking years ago. All right? Not that great of a time. Not that fuck. Not that great. We're all locked down. We all smell like sweaty ball sack. We haven't taken showers in weeks. We haven't had a fucking haircut. We're all, we all abandoned fucking blue jeans. We all had sweatpants on. It's the reason why we don't wear blue jeans anymore. Who the fuck wears pants? I don't even have pants on right now, bitch. That's right. Go tell Midas Touch and Ron Filikowski. Tony Michaels is not wearing fucking pants. Go write an article about it, Ron. Go write a fucking article. I ain't got my fucking pants on. Four years ago? Are you serious? I heard someone unironically say, but are you better off than four years ago? Bruh, we couldn't buy toilet paper four years ago. There wasn't, we couldn't even get fucking toilet paper. We couldn't get toilet paper. Motherfucker. There there was no fucking toilet paper. Anywhere, no matter where you went. And when they had it out, it was like, (laughs) it was like fucking zombies looking for fucking bodies when they had toilet paper. They were, they were only making us buy a half a case. You remember this shit? Like literally they were like, no, we're going to sell it by the roll. (laughs) You're like, what the fuck? I need more than one roll. I got five people in my house. What are you talking about? One roll. We didn't have toilet paper, dude. Am I better off than I was fucking four years ago? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think, I think, I think I'm good, right? I, I think I'm good. <laughs> I, I think I'm doing just fine. Just fine. All right, let's move on to some other news. Speaking of Donald Trump. You have uh, Nancy Mace over the weekend. Um, She's like, oh, by the way, I'm a rape victim. Nancy Mace, the congresswoman, that piece of trash. uh, She was on um, George Stepadepalopoulos, Slopadopoulos, 
um, as Trump calls him. I don't really have a problem with Trump calling George Stephanopoulos Slopidopoulos. I'm not really a George Stephanopoulos fan in the first place. George is not really that great at what he does. Some people think he is. He's not as good as he could be, so he's not that great. Honestly, if you're not given all your uh, fierce and uh, your fire fierce and fervor uh, towards these fascists and really burying them underneath mountains of facts, then you're not just you're not doing it right. right? Especially if you're normalizing the shit. They did a pretty good job with Nancy Mace and Nancy Mace got pretty pissed off at George uh, and because she I don't know, he was dropping facts about Donald Trump being a goddamn adjudicated rapist. That's right. Donald Trump is an adjudicated rapist. He's a fucking rapist. And you know the most beautiful part about this? You know the most beautiful part? Anyone and everyone can go say Donald Trump's a rapist, and it's the truth. They can't. He can't sue you. He can't sue anyone for calling him a rapist. He can't sue the media. He can't sue anyone who is defaming him. It's not defamation, man. You're an adjudicated fucking rapist. Now, Nancy, Nancy Mace on uh, George Slopidopoulos' show decided that she would say that she'd been raped. She's a victim of rape, which I, I believe her. I believe that she's a victim of rape. I'm not going to say I deny that. But fuck, I, I think if Nancy Mace says she was raped, then she's probably raped. But she says she, even though she's a victim of rape, she's going to support Donald Trump, a fucking rapist. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Now, here's here's the tweet that she put out, because a, a lot of people are going to, you know, look at, what someone else said about this, but I'm going to show you what the fuck she said. And this is what she posted. She posted this shit. I was brought on to talk about 2024. Instead, Clinton crony turned fake journalist, George Stepanopoulos, stop a Slopidopoulos. I actually like that nickname. Trump has some pretty good nicknames. You got to give him that. Slopidopoulos is a pretty good nickname. Attacked me and tried to shame me in, in, as a rape victim. What? That is not gross. That is not what he did at all, bitch. Not at all what he did. Not at all. He just, he, he just asked you if you're a rape victim and you're going to support a rapist. That seems kind of weird. Not, not going to lie. I said this to Nancy Mace directly. Most people won't tweet at people directly. They take a screenshot because they're scared to, I don't know what it is. I have, fuck it. I just tweet right at him. I said, Donald Trump would have raped you at 16 if you would have been so unlucky as to be one of Jeffrey Epstein's victims. If Nancy Mace would have had the unlucky drawing of the straw to be one of Jeffrey's massage mas uh, masseuses, underage masseuses, she would have been raped by Jeffrey Epstein and Donald Trump. Bar none. Fucking facts, man. Gonna lay it all out there. I don't give a fuck. Fuck them. Because he's a goddamn adjudicated rapist. He's an adjudicated rapist in the court of law. And then she wanted to make it about criminal and civil. Well, he's not a criminal rapist. He's just one of them civil rapists. I'm not shitting you. That's what this fucking shitbox said. And you think, you think I'm gonna stand here and believe it? Katie Britt or Liz Cheney or any other fucking woman hater, Megan Kelly and Coulter, when they say they they're for women, fuck you, fuck you. You are not for women. You're not for women's rights. You're not an advocate. You're not an ally. Move on, bitch. Move on. I don't give a shit if you got a giner or not. You are not for women. And it's not going to stand. And we got to fucking take a stance against this bullshit. And we got to do it correctly. We can't pussyfoot, not an excuse the expression, we can't pussyfoot around about women's rights in this country, okay? We can't do it. And any fucking man who's an actual man out there will stand up for women's fucking rights and their right to be a fucking human being and the right to their bodily autonomy the same way that you'll fervently fucking make sure that you defend the rights of the LGBTQ community, black and brown people, anyone, religion, it doesn't fucking matter what their gender, their creed, how they dress. It do I don't even give a shit if they're a fucking citizen of the United States or not. I don't give a fuck. They're fucking humans. Stand up for their goddamn human rights, bitch. And do it with some fire, okay? Get that fierceness in your belly out and fucking, you know, have a goddamn F word or two. For fuck's sake. But here's Nancy Mace on George Slavonopoulos' show. This is why women do not come forward. They are afraid. 
Congressman, thanks for joining us this morning. And you've endorsed Donald Trump for president. Mm -hmm. uh, judges and two separate juries have found him liable for rape and for defaming the victim of that rape. How do you square your endorsement of Donald Trump with the testimony we just saw? Well, I will tell you, I was raped at the age of 16. Uh That's what he's asking you. That's what he's asking you. He's asking you a question. Answer it. Um, and any rape victim will tell you, I've lived for 30 years with a, an incredible amount of shame over being raped. I didn't come forward because of that judgment and shame that I felt. And um, it's a shame that you will never feel, George. And I'm not going to sit here on your show and be asked a question meant to shame me about another. Uh, She's not shaming you, bitch, about you being raped. He's shaming you because of all motherfuckers. You should know that you shouldn't put a rapist in power, dummy. You fucking piece of trash. You piece of trash. If this is any kind of indication of how Nancy Mace will use her fucking power to defend women, it should be the indication. It should be the indication. This should be it right here. This is the reason why Nancy May should never win another election ever again, ever. I don't give a fuck what district it is because she will not defend fucking women's rights. She will not defend women's human rights. She will fucking endorse an adjudicated rapist who grabs women by the pussy after she gives testimony how she was raped when she was 16. And then she wants to make it as if it's George Stephanopoulos' fault that she's endorsing adjudicated rapist? This is not George's fault, you fucking bonehead. He's just asking you the goddamn question. You're the one who endorsed an adjudicated rapist after you're a rape victim. It seems a little confusing to him and to America, and I actually appreciate that George Stephanopoulos actually had the balls to ask you the fucking question, you piece of trash. Let's hear your trashy ass answer, you classless piece of shit. Potential rape victim. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. It's, it's actually not about shaming you. It's a question about. Donald no, you Trump. are shaming. You've me. endorsed Donald Trump for president. Right. Donald Trump has been found liable for rape by a jury. Donald Trump has been found liable for defaming the victim of that rape by a jury. It's been affirmed by a judge. It he was not a criminal the, court case, was, number one. Number two, I live with shame. and you're You should fucking live with shame. You should live with shame, you fucking cunt. He ain't asking you about your fucking rape dummy. He's asking you, you being a goddamn rape victim and knowing what it does to women, why are you fucking wanting to put Donald Trump in the highest office in the land when you know he's a fucking rapist? You piece of fucking shit. You piece of shit. Listen, we do not have to go easy on fucking rape victims when they're willing to let fucking rapists be the president of the United States and they can't even fucking defend it. And this is what really pisses off MAGA. This is what really gets underneath these MAGA little fucking snowflake skin is because when we challenge them to fucking defend their position, like the fucking lie that Katie Britt told over the fucking weekend. Speaking of women being raped, God damn, they don't want women to be raped, but they sure as hell, when they do get raped, they want to force them to carry those rape babies to full term, don't they? Oh man, they really give a shit about rape victims, don't they? Get the fuck out of here with that nonsense. Republican women and Republicans don't give a fuck about rape victims, especially the women. They're not even fucking humans, according to, uh, according to, to, to fucking Republicans. They're not. Don't get it twisted. They're not. Let me show you uh, how Katie Britt lied over the weekend because she did. She lied. She fucking lied. And it's really easy to know that she lied. I'm not going to play this whole video and I'm actually going to play it. Uh, let's tick up the speed just a bit here. Uh, so it might seem a little fast here. So pay attention. So you have no doubt seen this woman on your For You page at various points today. That is Senator Katie Britt, the junior senator from the state of Alabama, who delivered the Republican response to Joe Biden's State of the Union last night. It was weird. But the part that was the weirdest for me, the part that was the most off, was this. When I took office, I took a different approach. I traveled to the Del Rio sector of Texas. That's where I spoke to a woman who shared her story with me. She had been sex trafficked by the cartels starting at the age of 12. So I immediately had questions. Who was this woman? How did she meet her? How did she get her to tell her this story? Also, she seems to be describing something that had happened over the process of a year. She said that it started when this woman was 12. She says that she's a woman now, so it seems that some time has passed. How much of this happened on the border? What country did it happen in? Did it happen before Joe Biden was president? 
Senator Britt, right after that, stated pretty directly what side of the border it happened on, or at least she implies it very strongly. And we wouldn't be okay with this happening in a third world country. This is the United States of America. All right, so there's the answer. It happened in the United States, or did it? So I looked a little bit to see if I could figure out what Senator Britt was talking about here, and I found it pretty easily. Senator Britt has told the story over and over and over again since going on this trip. So all I had to do was look for details of the trip, see if there was any information about who she talked to, and if there was any more information about this case there. And I think I found it pretty easily. So in January 2023, Senator Britt, who had just become the junior senator from Alabama, traveled to Southern Texas to the Del Rio district near the border of Mexico with two other Republican senators, Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee and Cindy Hyde-Smith of Mississippi. And Senator Blackburn had all of the information about it on her website, her senatorial website. During this trip, among other scheduled visits, the senators had what they described as a round table, although you can see it's not a round table, it's a long table on which they're sitting on one side of it, it's a press conference. They were there with a Fox News contributor, Sarah Carter, who often does sort of the xenophobic anti-immigration coverage, as well as a Mexican congresswoman who's become an anti-human trafficking activist, as well as this woman who the senators identify as Carla Jacinto Romero. All I had to do was click on Carla Jacinto Romero's name, that hyperlink, on Senator Blackburn's page, and it took me to this. This is Carla Jacinto Romero's testimony to Congress from 2015. 2015! From 2015, her testimony about this in 2015. Tell me, tell me, who is the president of the United States in 2015? Can someone verify who the fuck was the president of the United States in 2015? Was it was it Joe Biden? Was he the president of the United States? It was Barack Obama. It was Barack Obama. So Barack Obama is responsible for this, right? Nope. Guess again. About her experiences in Mexico, if you scroll down, you see it took place between 2004 and 2008. Oh, it happened between 2004 and 2008. So now let's say who was president between 2004 and 2008. Who could that be? Who could it possibly be? We all know that it was Joe Biden. Joe Biden's been the president for almost 20 years. I mean, everyone knows that, right? Everyone knows that Joe Biden's been the president for almost 20 years. Dark Brandon has been controlling us as puppets in this communist America for almost 20 years. Everyone knows this. Hello. Duh. And that's why. That's why this woman was raped in Mexico. Okay. She was raped in Mexico. All right. A separate country because Joe Biden made sure that she would get what? What the fuck is Katie Britt talking about? Oh, what Katie Britt doing is what fucking Nancy Mace is doing. That, it's the same motherfucking thing. It's the same thing. It's the same fucking thing. It's using a rape victim to justify their hatred for women. That's what it is. Now, in Nancy Mace's case, it's her being the rape victim, her personal story of being a rape victim to justify their, her hatred for women by, by fucking endorsing a rapist who is an adjudicated rapist who grabbed E. Jean Carroll by the pussy and then tried to defame her after he grabbed her and raped her? It's adjudicated, motherfucker. We can say it out loud. He's a goddamn rapist, 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 rapist. He's a rapist, bitch. And there ain't a fucking thing anyone can do about it. Because that's the truth. But that's what they do. They have to lie. They can't they can't bring up a story about how Joe Biden made sure that women coming across the border would get raped by other migrants and white women around the country are getting raped by migrants. There was one woman killed and they want to say her name. They want to say her name and say her name. What about all the fucking other women that are raped by fucking white men like Donald Trump? What about E. Jean Carroll? Huh? Do they want to say E. Jean Carroll's name? I wonder if Marjorie Taylor Greene would wear a fucking E. Jean Carroll pin. She was raped. She was raped by Donald Trump. Why won't, why won't fucking Marjorie Taylor Greene say her name? Say her name, Marge. Say her fucking name, bitch. Say her name. E. Jean Carroll. You probably won't get it right. Lies. Is it surprising, though? Is it surprising that these are lies? Is it? I mean, the best part is the reaction. Not from the left wing. I mean, we all know the, the reaction of Katie Britt's little stupid fucking thing from, from, <laughs> from the left. I want to show you what it is from the right. 
This is, let me see if I can get the volume right on this. I think this one's pretty loud. This, this is Megan Kelly on her show on Sirius XM. That's right. Ke Megan Kelly has a show on XM radio. If you want to know how, how this world mainstreams people, women who are anti-woman. Because there's one thing that, that Megan Kelly hates, and it's a woman. Oh, she fucking hates women. She even loves other women who hate women like Ann Coulter. But let's listen to this part about what Megan Kelly thinks of Katie Britt's little response here. Republicans had an opportunity here to put their best foot forward and just sound normal. That's it. Don't shout, say normal things, and speak to regular Americans about what's real. And they blew it, as they do almost all the time in these State of the Union responses. They put up rising star in the Republican Party, Katie Britt, who is a senator from the state of Alabama and uh, a Republican, as I said. And I don't know what the F I saw. I, I agree with the people saying she looked like she was auditioning for a show on Lifetime. <laughs> the drama, the fake affectation, the over. I mean, there is one person that would know something about fake affectation than Megyn Kelly, right? Emma, right? The top portrayal of emotions I did not believe she was feeling at all. Her inauthenticity, it was totally cringe. Yeah, it's like uh, almost like when Megyn Kelly got fired from Fox News and tried to rebrand herself as a liberal over on MSNBC. You remember that? And then that fucking flopped. So then she had to rebrand herself as a fucking fascist over back on XM. It's almost like that happens all the time. As the kids would say, sorry, this is how I saw it. You tell me whether you disagree. Here are some high slash lowlights. I never could have imagined what my story would entail. To think about what the American dream can do across to just one generation in just oh one lifetime. It's truly breathtaking. But right now, the American dream has turned into a nightmare. Our country can do better. And you don't have to look any further than the crisis at our southern border to see it. President Biden inherited the most secure border of all time. He invited it. All right, all right, that's enough of that. <laughs> I want to show you what um, sh uh, how, Ann Coulter has a. I want to show you how um, Megan Kelly brought up Ann Coulter, though, because she brings up Ann Coulter, another woman hater, another uh, she woman woman hater, because that's what these people are. Like Megan Kelly, and you know, you can say they're self haters and all that stuff. You know, you, you can go down that path, but really, they just they hate fucking women. And a lot of times, and a lot of a lot of ladies out there will know this. There's no better um, hater of women than women in general. Like, you know, men fucking don't like women, right? Especially Republican old wrinkly white ball sacks. You know what I mean? These white Christian nationalists, they fucking hate women. They want women to be second class citizens. They don't want them to vote. They don't want them to put sh shoes on and they definitely don't want them to not be pregnant. That's why they, that's why they're so fervent about, about protecting rapists is because they are swans. These people who are willing to protect rapists, they're rapists. But here is um, here's Megan Kelly talking about Ann Coulter's take on it. This is fucking hilarious. Ann Coulter has a, <laughs> I love her sub stack. And she pointed out, I'm sure you do, you Nazi. No, the following. In the last nine responses to a State of the Union address, uh, Republicans have chosen a woman or a minority. This year, it was tearful Senator Katie Britt literally sitting at a kitchen table, presumably because a nursery school was not available. Ha, 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 So funny. So funny that they denigrate moms. They're so pro-woman, aren't they? Ha, 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 ha. The last <laughs> white male to give the response was Mitch Daniels. Coincidentally, it was the last decent one. You Ooh. So Ann Coulter and Megan Kelly loves her substack, loves her commentary, by the way. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but Ann Coulter is a white Christian nationalist. She always has been that fucking scumbag. I used to, I was first introduced to uh, Ann Coulter years ago. God, it was, uh, 
it was over 20 years ago, almost 25 years ago when I was first introduced uh, to Ann Coulter's bigotry. Um, it was on Bill Maher's Politically Incorrect. When I was a teenager, I used to watch Bill Maher's Politically Incorrect. Um, it was first on Comedy Central, and then I think it was on NBC. And it got canceled. Bill canceled himself after he said some disparaging stuff after September 11th. Um, and then he moved on to real time to be, uh, you know, the the boomer that we know him today and work into the situation where he's the boomer that we know him today. Um, but uh, I was first introduced to Ann Coulter way back then. And way back then, Ann Coulter was a fucking fascist. Ann Coulter was a fucking misogynistic, bigoted Nazi, a white Christian nationalist all the way back then. Right. The same and cult scumbag and sculptor that she is today. And here she is on her sub stack and Megan Kelly's reading it on her show that the last good Republican rebuttal was when a white man gave the rebuttal. That's what they're saying. And and Megan Cl Kelly couldn't agree more. You sure know your voters, GOP. This would be like Democrats refusing to give any jobs to women or minorities, as opposed to what they actually do, which is get to give all jobs to women and minorities. In caps, we are not the party of identity politics, you utter imbeciles. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, Democrats only give jobs to black and brown people and women. <laughs> you can't make that shit up. That's what Ann Coulter wrote. Ann Coulter wrote that Democrats only give jobs to women and black and brown people, minorities. And she she's probably throwing gay people in there, too. Oh, Anne hates her some fucking gay people, even though she is one. You ever seen her? She's, oh, my God. <laughs> I've, I've never seen a bigger fucking lesbian in my goddamn life. <laughs> Fuck. I knew that from the moment I, I was like, goddamn, she's a bigot and then she's a lesbian? This is weird. She loves to eat the rug. <clears throat> She does. It's Ann Coulter. If you don't know that, you haven't ever seen her talk in real life. What do you want from me? I just say the things that I need to say. You know, no one else is going to say this shit. No one else is going to talk about how Ann Coulter likes to munch carpet on their fucking on their show. They're not going to say that. They're not going to say that stuff. The left wing's not going to. They're like, oh, my God, I might get canceled if I say that shit about Ann Coulter. What? If you say that kind of shit about Ann Coulter, get the fuck. You could say almost any goddamn thing you want about Ann Coulter. Anything that is disparaging to her and you will not get canceled. And if you do get canceled for saying disparaging stuff to Ann Coulter, we are fucked anyways. We are completely fucked if you do. Fuck Ann Coulter. Fuck her and Megan Kelly. But the fact is that fucking Ann Coulter projects projects her anti-woman sentiment onto the Democratic Party by saying the only people that fucking the Democrats hire are women and brown people and minorities. Well, what actually Ann Coulter is saying in her ideology and what she's saying in her writing here and Megan Kelly is promoting without actually have to be promoting it. Is they're saying that they don't want women to be hired anywhere. They don't want women to work. Ann Coulter believes that women shouldn't work. She believes that minorities shouldn't have jobs. That's what she's saying when she says that shit. When she writes that shit down in her substack, that's what the fuck she's saying. And she believes that the last good Republican, the only Republican rebuttal that was good was the last white man, which was Mitch Daniels, the former governor of Virginia. I actually remember that rebuttal. He gave it in the in the uh, the Virginia chamber, believe it or not. He didn't give it in front of a camera on TV. He gave it in front of the entirety of the uh, of the joint session there in Virginia. I remember it. I remember it well. I've been paying attention to politics for a long time. You know, a lot of people on here they make they're like, Tony, you're not a you're not a lawyer. You don't know shit. Who are you? You don't know shit about shit, Tony. You don't know shit about politics. I've known who Ann Coulter was for 25 fucking years, motherfucker. And I know she's a goddamn Nazi for 25 fucking years. I may only be 39 years old, but I've been paying attention to politics for a long goddamn time. And there's one thing I know, and I know it well, and I know ideology. And these fucking scumbags hate women. 
Katie Britt, Nancy Mace, Megan Kelly, Ann Coulter, Marjorie Taylor Green, Lauren Bobert, you fucking name it. Marsha Blackburn will go down the goddamn list. Carrie Lake, all of them. If they can't stand for women's rights, they fucking hate women. They fucking hate them. I'm only 39? Yes. Well, I'm not quite 39. I'm almost. I'm not 39 yet. Very close. 39 years old. And that would put me at 25 years. Because I, pro I I was probably watching uh, Bill Maher's Politically Incorrect when I was 13 or 14 years old, I would say. Um, I don't know. It, it, it wasn't when it was on Comedy Central. It was, uh, oh, well, thank you. Looks like you're 27. Thank you. <laughs> 27, I'll take it. I thought you were like 17. And now you get now you fuckers are just being condescending. <laughs> I love you sons of bitches. But no, seriously. I've I've known that these scumbags were these scumbags a long fucking time, long before Trump, folks. These scumbags had been fascist fucking scumbags long before Trump. They just hit it a little better. They just hit it a little better. <laughs> Tony's older than Biden. That's right, bitch. I am. I'm 89 years old. I got a lot of wisdom under this hat. You sons of bitches. <laughs> Hell, fuck. All right. Let's move on. Uh, should we do some more Katie Britt stuff? I guess we could uh, do some more Katie Britt stuff if we wanted. Um, there was uh, Katie Britt came on the um, came on the television tube. Yeah, that's right. She went on the, uh, what was it, Fox or something? Was it Fox or was it, where was it? Now let's see if I can find that clip. She says some stupid shit. And I got to admit, like the, the Republican responses she give, oh man, it was fucking horrible. I mean, it was fucking trash. But let me tell you something. They're really, honestly, it just doesn't hit the same when she does this whole fucking thing, let's see if I can find it. Where the fuck is it? I think I need to start going here to find this shit. The problem is, is I've got way too many fucking, I got too many videos to show you guys. Oh, there's so much video footage. I don't think you understand how much video there is. Like how many fucking hours of clips that I have to watch to prep for this show and how many I don't show you. Now, if you want to see all the videos that I thumb through, I, I don't do every single one of them, but we've been posting most of them across social media. Uh, so on YouTube, you definitely want to hit subscribe now. Subscribe now! They've been telling me to be better at that. And I just, so I'm getting better at it. I just did it. Hey, subscribe um, so. now! <laughs> subscribe now! But the, the thing is, is that um, if you want to see some of these videos that I thumb through to prep for the show and what I'm watching uh, to prep for the show, uh, then you can actually go uh, to the YouTube channel and you can see a lot of the videos that I'm prepping. That's what some of the shorts are. That's what some of the other videos are that we're posting on there. That's just shit that I find that I'm watching to prep for the show to know what the hell is going on out there in the fucking world. Now, I also have to read shit, which is exhausting. I'm not going to lie. I fucking hate reading. I'd much rather watch a bunch of clips of these chuckleheads talking and then know what the hell's going to happen. But you got to read a little bit, you know? It sucks. No, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I don't like the reading part. I'm with Sarah Palin. I really don't like to read. I don't. I'm not very good at it. I'm not very fast at it. I can speed up a fucking video clip, you know what I mean? And I can listen with my ears while I'm, you know, I don't know, doing whatever. Cooking, you know, doing whatever. Playing with my pud. But I can't. I, it's, it's, it takes a lot of focus for me to read. So, um, <laughs> but apparently uh, Katie... Katie Britt can't read very good either. Uh, she sounds like it, at least. Here she is on Fox News trying to respond to her response. Listen to this. It just doesn't hit the same when she's not barefoot in the kitchen. See if you agree. Uh, he, he was uh, angry. Yeah. He um, yeah. seemed a bit incoherent. Was he? Uh, with his messaging and then wasn't oh. truthful with the American people. Is she talking about Biden or is she talking about Trump? Wait, let me let me play that back. Let's play that again. Let's 
let's let's pretend she's talking about Trump for a second. Let's see if she's talking about his Trump rally, his Nazi rally this weekend. Let's look. Yeah, he he was uh, angry at best. Um, seemed a bit yeah. incoherent uh, with his messaging, and then wasn't truth. Hey, uh, can we get? I know we've got some editors on here. Can we do something here uh, a favor for me? Can we get this clip and take um a footage? of um trump and put it over there on biden and then you're gonna have to change the chiron down here to where uh katie Britt responds to the trump nazi rally see if we can make that happen because that's a pretty easy fucking clip to make and i'll put it up on the youtube channel whoever makes it and sends it fuck yeah we'll get it up on the youtube channel you can put your fucking handle on there too uh that's what i need because um that's exactly what she's saying. And then the projection is always real with these some bitches. But really, she was really horrible in her response um, to, to the State of the Union. But this is even worse, right? This is worse. Yeah, he, he was uh, angry. He was, uh, best. Um, yeah, um, best. Uh -huh. incoherent. He seemed a bit incoherent. Uh, with his messaging and then wasn't truthful with the american people was it truthful with the american people you mean like you who fucking lied about the story of a woman getting raped and it was all biden's fault get the fuck out of here with this bullshit i guarantee goddamn to you that katie Britt will not be the senator of alabama for very much longer garen goddamn to you it i don't know fucking doubt me if you want to doubt me Say that I'm not smart and I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I got my smart glasses on and I'm telling you right fucking now, looking over these fucking lenses. Listen to me. Look at me right in the eyes. Katie Britt will not be the senator of Alabama very much longer. I'm telling you. She's not. She fucked this up big time. Number one, she's a woman and Republicans don't like women. They don't like women. They don't like them. Especially the women who don't hate women enough. I wish I could play you the Scarlett Johansson version. I really do, but she's going to ding us. Ah, fuck it. Let's go for it. Fuck it. I'm going to show you part of this. Number one, Scarlett Johansson is so fucking beautiful. Isn't she? God damn, she's gorgeous. Holy shit. And Black Widow and stuff banging smoking hot she is a smoke show but she plays katie Britt so well right she she dumbs us down so well with the green shirt in the kitchen and the stupid fucking hairdo right the flat ass hairdo whatever the hell that is um but she and she does the the trying to act acting um and they're gonna ding us for this but i'm gonna play it let's play it erica my name is katie Britt, and i have the honor of <laughs> serving the great people of alabama but tonight i'll be auditioning for the part of scary mom <laughs> and i'll be performing an original monologue called this country is hell you see i'm not just a senator i'm a wife <laughs> ah, that's so good <laughs> scary mom i gotta pause it and then go off of it and then go on it and then go on and the reason why is because of the copyright so i gotta have big long commentary because i gotta make it look like i'm making a whole new piece of content to show you people because i'm making a piece of content about the content even though i'm showing you their fucking content I'm giving them thousands of more views, but they don't get paid on it. Tony, we don't make ad money. That's what the fuck this shit's all about. You know what I mean? That's what the shit I'm fucking always railing on the left. They're so fucking concerned to get their money and their ad dollars that they won't let us politically show what the hell's going on in the politics because there is politics behind this. Behind this comedy, there's truth. And that's the difference between how Scarlett Johansson actually does uh, Katie Britt's little response to Joe Biden and how Katie Britt did it. And Scarlett Johansson actually has the truth in it. Um, <laughs> Mighty Librarian, she's our local mom here. She's telling me to go clean my room. Go to your room, Tony. Copyright is important. I get it. I know copyright is important. All I'm saying is, is that it shouldn't be so so willy-nilly in how they defend it. It's obvious on how I'm using their copyrighted material, I think, that I'm using it to narrate the politics. 
and to commentate on the politics. It's something they created because of the politics. So I'm commenting on the politics. So how is it copyrighted? Now, if I'm just going to lift their entire video and post it on my YouTube channel and try to sell ads around it, fine. But if I'm not selling ads, all I'm doing is producing commentary so people out there know the political ramifications of what Scarlett Johansson and Saturday Night Live did, well, then fuck that copyright. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and no, you're not teasing me. Don't tease me. Tell me to go to my room. <laughs> and mighty librarian. Always telling us to clean up our messes. Pick up your fucking mess. Go go empty the dishwasher. God damn it. Take out the fucking trash and go to your fucking room. <laughs> I love it. I love it. See, she's yelling at all of us. Go to your fucking room. Get your fucking ass in there. <laughs> Put your pants on. I won't do it. I won't do it. I'm not putting pants on. I'm defiant against pants, at least some of the times. Today, I do not have pants on. It looks like I got pants on because you can't see, but I ain't got pants on. I got underwear on, you sick fucks. I got underwear underwear on, you sick fucks. I just ain't got pants on. Jesus. Uh, it's fair use. Yes. Uh, well, here, let me pull this one up. It's fair use. Yes, I know that it's fair use. But the problem is defending the fair use is fucking, it's stupid. So here's how it works. Anyone who has the copyright to a piece of material like this can copyright my entire two-hour video where I showed 30 seconds of their clip. They can, they can copyright strike my entire fucking video, the entirety of the two hours that I fucking created with no script and no stealing of anyone's content. You can go fuck yourself. Right. But then I got to defend it. Right. It, the fair use and the copyright should not be that the person who is violating the copyright, especially on the internet in this situation, is the one who has to defend the shit. You have to defend your copyright. You should come have to fucking prove that I didn't fucking copyright strike your video. That's what it should be. Fuck that shit that I have to defend that I fucking fair use the thing. Fuck you. I did fair use the thing. And if you didn't know I fair use the thing, then all they're doing is using fucking AI and they're using computers. And this is the shit I've been talking about, man. The shit that you develop, that you put on the internet, that you type in... All your, all your fucking data and all that shit, all that stuff is your copyright, but they can steal it and you don't even know it because you don't have the big money to defend this shit like SNL and MSN or M NBC has. And they leave it up to me to prove that it's fucking fair use. And then I, so YouTube gives me a strike and then I got to go in and fucking type it in and be like, hey... Man, it's fair use. It's fucking obvious. I used 30 seconds in my entire two-hour video. How in the fuck? And I was talking about politics. I mean, yeah, we were talking about not wearing pants and dildos too, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> and sucking dick. That's neither here. Donald Trump sucking dick. That's neither here. I guess that's politics. Donald Trump sucking dick. I want to be a dick taster. Dick taster. I think that's politics. I don't know. All right, let's get back to the copyright strike. A mother and the craziest bitch in the Target parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> See the truth? The craziest bitch in the Target parking lot. Because that's the fucking truth. See, you got to interject the truth there. Because it is true. Yeah, there is no way that Katie Britt could pretend what she pretended on the response and not pretend to be mad because she got the wrong straw at Starbucks. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Like you get the big fucking cup and they give you the little straw and she goes in and she fucking throws the iced coffee at him and she throws her goddamn scone or whatever it is at him. And she's like, you motherfuckers, you gave me the wrong size straw or whatever the hell it is, right? I mean, yeah, she's in the Target parking lot, but half the fucking Targets in this country have a goddamn Starbucks in them. So you get what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Scarlett knows what I'm saying. I'm worried about the future of our children. <laughs> and this is why I've invited you into this strange, empty kitchen. Because Republicans wanted me to appeal to women voters. And women love kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god how much truth is there that women that republican republican white ball sacks republican old white ball sacks believe that women love kitchen 
not kitchens, kitchen, like anything that's kitchen, kitchen shows in the kitchen, being in the kitchen, being barefoot in the kitchen, kitchen stores, kitchen magazines, right? They love anything and everything kitchen. <laughs> oh my God. It's so true. You know, the best part about that line that Republicans, the reason why they put her in the kitchen because they love everything kitchen. I bet that line people really do believe, like they believe the Sarah Palin line about the front porch in Russia. They start to believe lines in this that are true that Katie Britt actually said. No shit, no way they don't. I bet that's one of them. But seriously, my husband Wesley and I just watched President Biden's speech, and what I saw was the performance of a permanent politician. But me, I'm not performing. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> so obviously she's alluding to the fact that someone has goaded her into overperforming this thing because she didn't come up with that shit on her own. Oh, fuck no. There's no way that Katie Britt ever came up with overperforming this rebuttal on her own. I mean, fuck, if you look at the pictures before, the kitchen was completely fucking empty. The picture before with her and her husband and her children that she posted on social media right before the rebuttal, the kitchen was empty. It didn't have the fucking fake fruit in the background. It didn't have the pictures on the goddamn $10,000 refrigerator. By the way, by the way, the refrigerator in the background before customization is a $10,000 refrigerator. $10,000. And Katie Britt is sitting at her kitchen table worried about gas prices. Give me a fucking break, man. And everyone thought I was out of hand saying that she probably has an undocumented worker that goes grocery shopping for her. There's probably un undocumented workers that fucking trim her hedges and trim her lawn. There's probably undocumented workers that clean that fucking kitchen. Not to mention the fucking money that they pay a personal chef to cook the fucking food that, a, that an undocumented worker goes and grocery shops for him. These people are fucking lion-ass hypocrites. Lion-ass hypocrites. And Scarlett Johansson here shows it perfectly with art. <laughs> but first and foremost, I'm a mom. And like any mom, I'm going to do a pivot out of nowhere into a shockingly violent story about sex trafficking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. The jokes just keep on coming. And really, honestly, there's another line right there that people might believe is the truth. They might think that was actually in the fucking speech because that's exactly what happened. Scarlett Johansson is not lying here. She's just telling the truth about the fucking speech. Now she's using a joke and a roundabout way to tell that truth. But it's the truth. That's what Katie Britt did in her original fucking rebuttal to the State of the Union is she pivoted from some happy-go-lucky, I'm in my kitchen, and I'm a mom, and I have kids, and they're great, too. Oh, raping women. Like, what? Jesus Christ, you're in dark times. And rest assured, every detail about it is real, except the year, where it took place, and who was president when it happened. <laughs> and tonight, I am not just responding to the State of the Union. I am also selling these gorgeous bejeweled cross necklaces. <laughs> There it is. There it is. Goldencrosses.grift. Goldencrosses.grift. Of course, there's always a grift, and she points out that there's always a grift, and that's what it's always about, is it's always about a fucking grift with these motherfuckers. It's always about getting ahead. And the one reason why I know, other than this Scarlett Johansson video, maybe there's two reasons. This Scarlett Johansson video, and the other reason why I know that Katie Britt will not be the senator of Alabama much longer is because Donald Trump defended her. Donald Trump defended her. Defended her. Ooh, fuck. But let me show you this here. Let me show you the, the dark Brandon rope dope that happened this weekend over the weekend because this is a video that won't get copyright strength. Because this is a political ad from Dark Brandon as he comes off the ropes to beat the shit out of MAGA. Look, I'm not a young guy. That's no secret. But here's the deal. I understand how to get things done for the American people. I led the country through the COVID crisis. Today, we have the strongest economy in the world. I passed a law that lowers prescription drug prices. Caps insulin at $35 a month for seniors. 
For four years, Donald Trump tried to pass an infrastructure law, and he failed. I got it done. Now we're rebuilding America. I passed the biggest law in history to combat climate change because our future depends on it. Donald Trump took away the freedom of women to choose. I'm determined to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. Donald Trump believes the job of the president is to take care of Donald Trump. I believe the job of the president is to fight for you, the American people, and that's what I'm doing. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Dark Brandon, motherfuckers. He's off the ropes and he's boxing and he's swinging and he's throwing those punches. Bam, 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 bam. And we should all support him. Get right behind him and throw those punches at him. Not just Donald Trump, but all the way down the fucking ballot. Get fucking excited. Get engaged. Get fucking fired up, motherfuckers. Because we're going to go to the polls and we're going to bury these motherfuckers under mean mountains and mountains and mountains of votes and send fascism packing where it belongs right back underneath its fucking rock. And we're going to do it here every single weekday. Two motherfucking hours, two hours a day on the tubes of you, the books of face, the Twitch machine, X Chan and Instagram. We're going to do it and we're going to keep doing it and keep pounding that drum as you should be out there. Pounding the drum for democracy. Get engaged. Use your strategic outrage to advance democracy. We'll do it here. Same time, same place tomorrow. Surf's up, motherfuckers. You've been listening to the Tony Michaels Podcast. Podcast. In your face commentary of current events and political news. No rules, no boundaries. I think we've made that perfectly clear. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll be back soon. In the meantime, follow Tony on social media at the Tony Michaels. And until next time, raise a fist and repeat after me. Fuck them. Murphy's meal barn, head ass speaking. Hello, everybody. I wanted to get on here and tell you that we're going to the Supreme Court next Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we're going to, uh, you'll be able to watch everything on frankspeech.com. Everybody, should you get to? You need to get informed here. Of this go to lindellplan.com. Lindellplan.com. We've been waiting three long years for a breakthrough to the Supreme Court, and now we have it. The evidence we're going to drop that you're going to see on Friday is the most explosive evidence you've ever seen. So, what a blessing! We finally made it. We'll see you Friday at 3 p.m. live from the steps of the Supreme Court. Thank you. Isn't it past your jail time? you a little fucking dose of reality here if the vice president really did have the power to pick who the president was why in the fucking hell would joe biden pick donald trump in 2017 you dumb motherfuckers this deluded little fucking loophole exists us radical socialist commies would have took power and took over the country you dumb fucking idiots work up a better fucking plan would you please fuck them give you a little fucking dose of reality